Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge and welcome back to the Guild 3 where the Visby police are back on the beat and this time they're not shaking people down or extorting them for money or whatever, they're actually doing some proper police stuff. They are standing guard, watching over Visby to make sure that any troublemakers are being dealt with, which is much much better, that's what we had in mind when we wanted to set up a police force. So of course we kind of had the little bit of a false start with all the mercenaries going around the place and you know being essentially like the mafia, but we kind of, yeah, we nipped that in the bud quite early. We stopped them doing that and then now we've been able to put together a proper police force which is very good so there we go well done visby pd thank you for looking after the lovely people of visby it's very very nice of you indeed so yes we now have our barracks set up over there which is very good so today i think our plan has to be to build ourselves another business because we have the capacity for one more so the big question is what do we go for do we go for something that we already have, like the infirmary, or do we go for something completely and utterly new? Do we branch out into a whole new line of business? I think what we need to do is, we need to go and have a look around Visby to see what there is. Let's go and see what Visby has to offer. And if there is a great big gap in the market, then we could exploit that. So let's go and have a little look around. Now, fortunately, Visby is not absolutely huge. I mean, it's quite big but it's not the biggest of all the cities in the Guild 3. So we should be able to go and have a quick look around to see what there is and identify any kind of you know, glaring kind of gaps in the market. So over here, what do we have? There's a foundry, there's a bakehouse. Now that's a bit of a shame that there's a bakehouse over there because you know, we are the Biscuits dynasty and I was kind of hoping that nobody had set up a bakery so we could be the first and then we could make our own biscuits. But if there's one over there, possibly we don't go ahead with that and there's a foundry and a brickery there's another mercenary quarters over there boo boo mercenaries uh, a thieves den another bakehouse okay crikey yeah we'll stay away from the bakehouses then um not much going on over here not much going on in the Hansa quarter right now uh, there's a thieves den okay called crime pays uh, there's a weaving mill and a pest house okay and there's a scriptorium over there. Now, there's quite a few sort of industry sort of things over here. So we have a joinery. There's a tailor shop. Um, there's a couple of warehouses. That makes sense because that's by the port. That's kind of it over there. So there's not much over here, really. And then in the middle here, of course, we've got our infirmary. There's a stone cutters. There's our own barracks. There's a turnery. And then there's an inn. And that's kind of it. Oh, no, there's a bakery over there as well. I notice, however, there is only one inn. There is one inn in the whole of Visby. That's not very many at all. And these are very, very good. As I recall from last time, inns, when you can get them set up and working properly, are very, very profitable. So I wonder if we get an inn set up, but we put it over here somewhere. Because there's quite a lot of people that live over here. There are many, many houses and a market and a good bit of space over here. But, um, but yeah, there's no inn. So I think that's what we do. I think that's what we should set up. And yeah, a few people in the comments have said that inns do generate a lot of cash. So um, I think that's what we should do. Maybe let's focus on getting it in. There can't just be one, surely. Visby's quite a big place. Where does everyone go to have a nice evening drink? Yeah, they can't just sort of all pop down the one pub there is. My goodness me. Okay, well, there we go. Let's see if we can you know, try and sort of tap into that source of income by putting it in over here somewhere. Um, yeah, what else did we not see? What else did we not see? Hang on a minute. Let's go into go into the skill tree. So in terms of food prep, yeah, we saw a bakery. Um, what's that there? That's hospitality. Yeah, that's the inns. That's what we're going to have to go down. Uh, what was that there? That is a butcher. Oh, hang on. Yeah, did we see a butcher? Did we see a butcher? There's a fishing hut there. Um, and that goes down to, yes, yeah, so a butchery. I don't know if we saw a butcher's anywhere either. Um, that's kind of like farm stuff and what have you. Not so bothered about that. And yes, yeah, so this is kind of like crafting huts and things, isn't it? So yeah, that's like a brickery and all that kind of stuff. That's a carpenter's place and a turnery. There's a few of those around. Um, clothing shop. There was a tailor's, wasn't there? There was a tailor's. Although, as I recall, they make some good money as well. But that's okay for now. And then, yeah, kind of like a foundry and a blacksmith. I think there was a foundry as well. So we won't go down that route. And then, yeah, just the ones over here, which I'm not overly sort of sure about. We've got ourselves, yeah, the kind of the herbalist hut thing for the apothecary. Uh, we could go down that, I suppose, might be okay. Goes with the sort of medical kind of thing, I guess. Um, yeah, that, that, oh, they sound exciting. Hang on, what? An alchemist workshop goes down to a lab, goes down to a magician shop. Hang on, a magician shop sounds very, very exciting. I like the sound of that. Not so enamoured with the whole sort of, you know, grave digging, preaching kind of thing going on over there. So I think that's that bit, isn't it? Oh, that's preaching. Oh, no, that's not grave digging. Grave, I know grave digging is over there, isn't it? Grave digging is over this side. 
Um, yeah, I think we're okay for these, aren't we? That's a smuggler, that's a robber, and that's a grave digger. Yeah, okay, we don't want any more of the kind of the roguish things. We just want to kind of max our own skills out with those. Um, yeah, possibly. I like the idea as well of going down the route of this. I want to have a magician shop because that sounds very exciting indeed. Um, okay, right, there are plenty of options, plenty of options. But yeah, I think, I think an inn is going to be our best, our best course of action right now. So I think, yeah, we can only get to a tavern at the moment. We need to be a squire to get up to an inn. So yeah, we're a little bit of a way off a squire right now. Um, so 500 influence to unlock food preparation one. That's fine. So there we go. We've branched out into a whole new kind of line of understanding. And yeah, we want to go down this route here. So we need Orchardist 1. Okay, so we're going to learn about fruit. Okay, there we go. Hooray! We can identify an apple and an orange or whatever. That's good. And then two and a half thousand money so we can have a public house. There we go. And now we need six and a half grand to unlock Hospitality 2, which lets us build a tavern. And then we're going to need a pile of money to actually build the tavern, and then a pile of money to staff the tavern, and then a pile of money to actually you know, get stock into the tavern. So we're a little bit of a way off that right now. However, hang on, Ulrika is being spoken to. Hello, who's chatting to Ulrika? Uh, you are you are doing a dynastic trade. Okay, are we supposed to be aware of the dynastic trade? Uh, oh no, no, you're not. You're doing a sorry. You're doing a public relations thing. Sorry, yeah, I got the little sort of icons mixed up. No, you're doing a public relations thing on us. Oh, okay, that's fine. It'd be nice if you were sort of you know trying to generously donate some money to us. We're not calling it a bribe, of course, because that would be terrible. But it'd be nice if you were giving us some money. But never mind. Right, so Rika is still over there playing some uh, playing some music when she's not being spoken to by people. But um, yeah, okay, that's fine. So that didn't work so well, I don't think. People are leveling up. This is very good. Is it the um, is it the Fisby PD? Yes, it is. Okay, so uh, we've got Einar there. You can have a point of strength because it's important for our police force to have a little bit of strength going on. And then you over there, Ludwig, um, you can have a point of dexterity. So you can, you know, you can jump excitingly around like police do. You can jump over the front of cars and all that kind of stuff. Or carts, I suppose it would be here. So there we go. That's good. They're all now at level two as well, which is marvellous stuff. Um, OK, I think we just need to run time on. We just need to keep time ticking on until we have a great big pile of money. Now, a few people in the comments have said, when are you going to click the button on the right hand side with the big red sort of flashy on and off thing? It's a very good point. Yeah, I've kind of overlooked our duties here. So this is coming up with all of our calendar events. And yeah, there is an election for an office of captain and we are a candidate. Yes, because we applied for this. So at 2.22 in the morning in the year 1434, so yeah, the next sort of day as we see it, uh, we might well go up to captain. Now, has anybody else applied or is it just us? It's just us. So I suspect possibly we're going to get that job. So Ulrika will be the captain of the guard which is all very exciting. That does go well with the whole sort of police thing. So there we go. Um, and a few people have reminded me that we do have a sort of a character overlier thing over here, which is very handy. Um, hang on. Rich T, you're five. Does that mean you can go and do stuff now? Can you do stuff? You're just hanging around at home right now. But I think that means you can get involved with stuff. Why is Hedvig Hansen just stood in our house? <laughs> Hedvig, is there anything you'd like to tell us about that incident there? What did you just do? Um, yeah, I think, yeah, you're just, you're bored. Because I think Rich T can actually go and do something now. Hang on a second, hang on. Um, yeah, open the building menu. Uh, close that thing again. Oh, no, hang on, there we go. Um, so yeah, if we now, where are you? You're down here. Yeah, Rich T, I think we can actually employ you. So I don't think Nice is too young yet. Nice is three, but Rich T is five. So I think Rich T can actually go and do something. Oh, this is very good. Okay. So let's hire you as a worker, which is a bit weird, but there we go. So hire Rich T as a worker for some reason. Um, and then Rich T, um, go out and play. Very important part of your upbringing. All your other sort of, you know, all the other relatives and siblings and whatever else, cousins have all done it. So there you go. You go and do that as well. Go out and have a play. It's very good for getting some influence in and some XP and some good relations with the other, with the other uh, sort of dynasties as well. So there we go, Rich T. You can go out and have a play. That's all very nice. And there you go, immediately out into the night. <laughs> go out and play at 20 past 10 at night. There you go, into the streets with you. But there we go, splendid. So you can go around the place and just, yeah, pick up a few little bits of influence and you know, make us a little bit more sort of renowned around the place. That's very good. Result of a vote. Okay. Tarousen Visby, public influence opinion up by 18. 
the council assistant and the town clerk agreed with this. Okay, that's that's very good. Do you know what? I do like that. That looks good. The front of the castle with the purple lamp. That is very good. That looks very atmospheric. There we go. Um, right. Ulrika's finished doing what she's doing, so let's actually get her doing some more music playing. I like the Dynasty Biscuits. I'm not sure why everyone likes this dynasty so much, says two people right next to the person who is the head of that dynasty. <laughs> Ulrika, go and play some music right at this person's face and go, that's why, because we've got wonderful music skills. Um, okay, oh, and she's just magic to horse out of nowhere. There we go, well done, good skills. Uh, okay, yeah, now digestive is away on a sort of a long distance trade mission journey type thing. So digestive is going to be out of action for a while. So um, yeah, it's just a case of waiting for money to come in now, isn't it? Just a case of waiting for all of that money to pour in. Six and a half thousand just to get hospitality too. And then, yeah, we're going to need another, what? At least seven thousand, I would have thought, to then build the thing in the first place. Or somebody else is trying to talk to us now. Leave us alone. You're doing some PR stuff as well. It interrupts our music playing. If you could stop this, please, that'd be that'd be quite nice because we're just having a lovely time. Just you know, playing some music and entertaining. You keep coming to bother us. Okay, so it's rolled over to summer of the year 1434. So in a couple of hours time, we will get to see if we actually got that job. Now, I think we did. I imagine we did get that job. Oh, hang on a minute. Something just happened with Ulrika. We lost a buff that we had. Oh, OK, that's fine. Right, Ulrika, you know what to do. Just go and do that again, please. There we go. Right, so there we go. So, yeah, we want to just run time on until about that time. I love the fact that money comes in so much overnight. That is very, very good. Because, yeah, the pest house, I don't think. Not the pest house, the infirmary. It's an upgraded pest house. It's fancier than that now. And that doesn't close. That just runs all night because, of course, they're there to treat people, I think. So that does seem to just function overnight, which is very handy. So there we go. Right, Ulrika's done that again. Are we going to get the job? Here we go. Is it 20 past two or something like that? Let's see. Ulrika, are you going to get a promotion? Formerly a dungeon master, now a captain. You are the captain, Ulrika. And here you are, just, you know, happily playing your flumpet out here at the market. Again, for the bajillionth time. Yes, there we go. We're now a captain, which is very good. And yeah, we do need to as well, at some point, try to get up to... Yeah, the next level up here, Nobleman. 20,000 money it's going to cost us. So a great big investment. But if we get that, we can then get the nepotism skill or whatever it is, ability. Which means we can have more than just Ulrika going for those council jobs, which might be worth doing because we have got a lot of influence and they do bring in some influence back, but they also do bring in some money as well. They're quite good things to have. And of course, the more people we have in all of these jobs, the more chance we have of other people coming along trying to bribe us, which is very handy. So there we go. Maybe we'll think about that. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Thorge. Thorge Broderson has got into the sort of the second tier of sort of whatever it is city management as well. There is a market reeve job available, which is similar in sort of position to our captain job. And then, yeah, there's a Martins down there and two Lassesons. So, yeah, of course, the Lassesons are above that sort of uh, social standings. So they've got that nepotism ability. So they can have many family members going for it, which is why they've got two right now. OK, right. That's fine. So that's something that we do need to think about. Ulrika doing some more music. You're very good at it, Ulrika. Keep going, please. Um, OK, right. So we've got the money to at least unlock the skill. So there we go. Six and a half grand to do that. We don't need to unlock Orchardist 2 because that's completely pointless. We can't do anything with that. But yeah, we can now look at this. We can have a tavern with strong beer, wheat beer, and we can serve roast beef, which is very nice indeed. OK, so... How much is it going to cost us to get a tavern? I'm imagining it's going to cost around 7,000. Oh, no, 7,000, 5,000. I don't know. Between the two, probably. 7,000 for a tavern. OK, we're a bit short of that right now. But none of the businesses are open. Um, oh, someone has praised us. Uh, Mikkel Hansen praised Ulrika Biscuits in public. That's very nice. And apparently the reputation status of our dynasty with the inhabitants in Ostrobin is now friendly. Oh, that's good. Uh, yeah, how are we doing with that? How are we doing with all of that kind of stuff? Popularity. Uh, oh, my goodness me. We are we are beloved in many places. Okay, this is wonderful. Look at that in Old Town. Relations score 100. New Town, Relations score 99. Oh, that's wonderful. That is very, very good to see. Okay, good stuff. Very nice indeed. Right, let's run time on until we've got a good pile of money. 
We're going to need at least, I would have thought, 12,000 money to get the tavern built and then set up and get a transporter and get the transporter with proper transporting gear and all that kind of stuff. So 12 grand, I think we need another about 10,000 monies to make sure they've got enough money to then start building our fancy kind of tavern drinking place. Okay, something is happening up here. What's this? A building is under attack. Oh, hang on. Clicking, clicking where it says this building is under attack doesn't take us to the building that's under attack. Oh, okay. Well, how do, how do we know which one it is? Our reputation has diminished. Oh, hang on. What? The reputation status of your dynasty with the inhabitants in surrounding region of Visby is now neutral. And then Ostrobin is now neutral. Uh, oh. Oh, that's come tumbling down. Uh, okay, that's a surprise because that was looking really very healthy just not that long ago. But now it's come sort of plummeting down. Okay, what's happened in Ostrobin? Somebody's obviously been sort of, uh, yeah, spreading bad things about us. Ah, there we go. So... The council assistant said, yes, we should have a negative public opinion thing for the Biscuits dynasty. The town clerk said no, and the town clerk isn't there or whatever. So the outcome was yes. Okay, so we lost 24 public opinion because of a council thing. How do we go about doing that? How do we go about doing that kind of thing? Hang on, where was that? So yeah, the town clerks was it. Yeah, it was you two. Yeah, so you said, yes, it should happen. However, the Lassesons, so Runhild said no. Runhild voted against our our sort of uh, penalty there, which is very nice. Thank you. That's very kind of you. But yeah, um, Fritjof Martin said, yes, let's damage our reputation. Boo, Fritjof. Um, okay, right. That was a bit of a surprise, but there we go. There's a vacant treasurer role. Can we go for that? Can we apply for that? You need a higher title? No, what do we need? We need to be a squire. Oh, we're away off a squire. Yeah, we need to go to Nobleman and then Esquire. We are 50,000 money is off of that. I don't think we're going to get to that point at any time soon. So there we go. We'll have to sort of uh, park our lofty career ambitions for a little while. There's the Sovereign. There's the Sovereign of Visby. Hello, how are you? You might want to watch out because the you know, previous couple of Sovereigns haven't lasted very long, I don't think. So you might want to be a bit careful. But there you go. Hello, Jürgen Schroeder. How are you? Hello, Your Highness, I suppose. Um, right, okay, run time on, get the money coming in, get Ulrika playing lots of uh, play lots of music because it does generate a bit of cash. It's all going the right way. The money isn't coming in quite as quickly as I'd like it to. Maybe, hang on, are our buildings operating properly? That's over here, isn't it? Buildings. Um, yeah, is everything, is everything okay? Which building is under attack? I would expect if a building was under attack, it would take a bit of damage, possibly. Um, no. I don't quite know. So this building is under attack and then nothing seemed to happen from that. I mean, are there any corpses lying around any of our buildings or anything? I don't think there are. It, everything looks okay. Everything looks fine. I'm not quite sure what that was all about. But there we go. Apparently one of our buildings was under attack and now it's not and everything seems fine, which is wonderful. Hooray for not being under attack. Oh, this is all very dramatic. Someone hired a murderer to kill Alvar Emilson. You, however, were in the right place at the right time and were able to scare the villain off with a loud shout of murderer, help. I mean, that would do it. If there was a murderer, shouting murderer, help is just, it's the, exactly the right thing to do. So well done, Ulrika. The Emilson family is most grateful. Okay, that's very good. So our reputation with them will have gone up a bit, which is never a bad thing. Hang on a minute. We've got another flashy icon thing over here. So election for office... Uh, council Guardian Position Nominator. Okay, so we have to cast our vote on somebody, but there's only one applicant, is that right? And there's no candidates. There's no candidates at all. Okay, right, we can't do anything with that. Um, and then, apparently at 9.56, there are court proceedings. Oh, we're supposed to do a court thing. Oh, hang on, let's go and issue our verdict. Um, yeah, I'll go with what we think should happen. Yeah, uh, John, John of the... Ah, the Lassesons. Uh, we're going to find John. There you go, John. You've, you've got to pay some money out or whatever you've done. You're the accuser. There's no accuser. What exactly are you in for? What, what, what was the crime? I kind of feel like I've not got all the information here. There's a verdict, but I don't know what you're supposed to have done. It, it, whatever, it's fine. His fine is 3,333 monies. Good grief. <laughs> that's, that's huge. That's a massive fine. Okay, there we go. So, yeah, he's been fined, which is something that we were supposed to do. I'm not quite sure what for, but there we go. Good job as captain. Not quite understanding what we're doing, but whatever the case. Right, you keep on doing that. Somebody else has leveled up. It's Axel over at Big and Bubbly. 
Um, Axel, maybe have. What affects productivity? Um, dexterity and intelligence. Okay, have another point of dexterity then. 135.5% productivity. That's very good. And a good opportunity for some long distance trade. A terrible famine has broken out in Lubeck. The city's counting house is only seeking food no later than about 10 o'clock tonight and is ready to pay high prices. Have we got the trade thing open with Lubeck and somebody's leveled up? Rich T has leveled up. Well done, Rich T. Um, how about you have a point of dexterity to make sure that all of your skills are at least at four? There we go. Well done. Good job on being dexterous. Um, yeah, okay. So did we, did we, let's go back over here. Did we open up the thing to the trade route to Lubeck? I can't remember. We've got Gdansk. Uh, ah, we haven't got Lubeck unlocked, so that's a little bit pointless for us. Okay, never mind. We can't do anything with that. Right, let's go back to waiting for that money to come in. We have got eight grand right now. So I suppose... Oh, a little bit more. Well done, Ulrika. Look at that. That's a very lovely pile of money you just made there. Good job. Uh, yep, do you know what? Go back and do it again, please. Uh, oh, okay. I didn't mean to click just there. Go and play music right at these people in the market. Okie doke. I think... It's what, coming up to lunchtime. So I think let's go and build the thing. Let's get the actual, it's not an inn, is it? It's a tavern that we can build. But let's go and build the tavern. At least put it in place over here. Oh, did that just appear? Has that always been there? That thieves' den. I was going to build there. Maybe we can build over here. Because if you can build near the market, that's good sort of foot traffic. Or build here, possibly. That'd be quite nice. So let's see. Let's get the, the, sort of the building in. So here we go. A slow time. No, I did press spacebar to pause it then, but this game doesn't have spacebar. Is pause. Boo game. Um, right, here we go. So a tavern. 7,000 monies. Um, it wants to be called the Purple Swan. No, 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 no. That, that's not going to do at all. I think we'll call it the Bottle and Biscuit. I quite like that idea. So yeah, you come in and get your beer and that's fine. And presumably it's in bottles or wine in bottles or whatever. And then on the side, we can offer a little complimentary biscuit just to kind of, you know, keep the biscuit name in people's minds. So, you know, it's always there present, you know, sort of, it's like your dynasty branding kind of stuff. So there we go. We'll call it the Bottle and Biscuit. And it fits perfectly in the 20 character thing as well, if we use an ampersand. So there we go. Bottle and Biscuit. Now, where can it go? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. It could go just there, though, right next to the market, or it could go on that side. Um, I think it's going to go better here. Hang on. Where's the sort of... Yeah, that's, I think, yeah, it's going to suit that place better. That looks like it's going to be a slightly busier kind of route. So, yeah, let's put that there. So, pop that into place. Yes, please, seven grand to get that done. Although, money is ticking up already. And we've got back up to four grand. So, that's quite nice. So, the money is coming in very nicely indeed. So, um, yeah, let's wait for this to sort of, you know, rise out of the ground in that weird way that Guild 3 buildings do. Hang on a second. Somewhat appropriately, I suppose, we do have a couple of family members who are a bit drunk. So, Emily Biscuits... Oh, Emily Biscuits is drunk twice. She's really, really drunk. Okay. Right. So, Emily Biscuits has had a little bit too much to drink. I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. As long as in the future she comes to get uh, drinks from the bottle and biscuit, that'll be absolutely fine. Right. Ulrika. Keep on doing what you've been doing, absolutely. Maybe play more in the middle, however. Maybe don't play quite so jammed into the market, sort of stall things. Um, so yes, yeah, so this isn't going to take too long. And I think, look at that, the money is just absolutely flying in. This is wonderful. So get this put together. And what we'll do is we'll get the transporter in first. And then we'll equip the transporter with all the things they need. Essentially, they only need to go next door, though. Although I suppose they could go to different places, um to get things cheaper, I guess. So here we go. Right, go into here, hire ourselves a transporter because that's what we're going to need. Um, hang on, slow time down to really slow. So let's put this on automated production because we want to do that because that makes it easy. And we'll hire some workers as well. So hire a worker, absolutely. Hire a worker, absolutely, yes. Right, we can only have the two right now, but we have got enough money, I think, to then get ourselves another worker and another worker as well. This is good. Um, we'll have some of the productivity stuff as well. Where is it? Building security. Don't mind investing in a bit of that. That's okay. Uh, productivity up as well. And customer satisfaction up. Okay, so we have spent a chunk of money, but the building is now looking pretty good. Uh, and then we can hire another worker. There you go. Welcome aboard. And then we can hire another one as well. And their current job is making alcohol. Okay, I mean, that would make sense, given that it's, you know, a tavern where people go to have a nice drink. 
So I think, yeah, we'll get four people in doing that. We'll have four people tending to customers because we don't want to leave people waiting. Um, but then we need to get our transporter in. So yes, please get the transporter in. So who have we got? Um, Ansgar. Okay, right. Hold on a second, Ansgar. Hold on a second. You're very eager and that's very admirable, but we have got a few things to sort out. Um, and then in storage. Okay, what do we want to do here? So mixed herbs, uh, minimum of 20 maximum of everything hang on what do we need them for what do we use those for the mixed herbs are used for what why why do we want mixed herbs game what do we need those for uh we're making anything else making i don't know what we're making hang on why do we need them ah there we go sausages ah yes okay now this might sort of tie in quite nicely if we were to build a butcher's which i don't think visby had not in the city bit they might be out in the out in the sticks, or whatever, but so you know, in the city, we could, I suppose, look at doing some of this as well. But okay, right, that's fine for now. So they've changed their plan. So the now automated orders are some alcohol, some wheat beer, uh, some sausages, some roast beef, and some strong beer. Ooh, very nice. This is currently the strongest beer you will be served in the taverns. Okay, so this is like proper brain rotter type stuff. Okie doke. Um, right, Ansgar. You need to come over here. Oh, many, many things happening over there. Right. Pop over to the market, please. My good sir. Pop over to here. We're going to pick up a few bits and bobs. So here we go. Uh, so we need to get you certainly some sort of defense. That'd be quite nice. So weapons and armor. Let's give you... I mean, leather gloves are good. Just plus one armor and plus one defense. Just straight up. Nice and simple. So I'll have one of those. And then just, yeah, just a dagger will do. One attack power, 15 damage, plus one defense. So I'll have one dagger. There we go. And then you need a transporty thing. So now do we give you a hand cart? Minus 10% speed, but plus two storage slots. Or do we give you a horse? Plus one storage slot, plus 43% speed. Or do we give you a horse-drawn cart? Two storage slots, 5% speed. Given that you're quite near to the, the tavern... And you only need to nip next door. I think what we might do is we might get you a horse. That's exciting, isn't it? However, we don't have enough money for a horse right now. So let's run time on until we've got maybe around two grand. Oh, there you go. <laughs> we've got two grand. Yay. Right. Let's buy Angsgar a horse. There you go. You've got your own horse now. Well done you. And now, yes, you can resume working. So there we go. You go and do that. So plus 43% speed. That's very good. And off you gallop on your horse. Are you? Hang on. Uh, are you having some issues with your horse? I think you might be possibly having some technical problems. It's fine. It looks like you're on top of it. <laughs> uh, almost literally. There you go. Right. You, you're on your horse now. That that was a weird way of mounting a horse. I don't know if that's the official way to do it, but whatever. You uh, you do you, Angsgar. Oh, hang on a second. I've just realised that we need to get Angsgar some proper clothing, don't we? Some proper sort of bargaining clothes. Hang on, Angsgar. Sorry. Forget your plans. Come back this way, please. Sorry, I've interrupted it again. Um, yes, you need to get some proper clothing on to get some good bargaining. Because at the moment, transporter's clothes, plus 1% speed. That's okay, but you are now you know, atop a horse. So the horse can go quicker than those clothes could ever make you go. So how about, yeah, which one was it? Um, there was a really good one for bargaining. Hang on a minute. Which one was it? So wool cloak is plus 3 bonus. Um, hang on, plus 8 bonus. There you go. Free citizen's garb. Plus eight bonus when bargaining. That's got to be what we go for. I mean, even that, even the stately garb is only plus five. Uh, that's plus ten, however. Gorgeous clothing. But it is very, very expensive, as you might expect. Um, no, we'll go for the um, the free citizen's garb. We can't afford it right now, so let's move time on until we have a big pile of money again. And is it going to happen this time? No, it's not coming quite quick enough this time for us to buy. But yeah, it's, it's ticking up. 909, come on. There you go. Right, so the money is coming in. So you can now wear that. So, your yes. We're now a little bit out of pocket, unfortunately. Now you can go and do the stuff. There you go. Right, so we do need to get some money in quite quickly because we were a bit poor. Oh, crikey. The leader of another dynasty has died. <gasps> oh, okay. This is interesting and also a little bit worrying for us. Okay, so who's died? Um, Ola Taralfson has died. Oh, oh my goodness me. Ulrika. Ulrika, the old guard, are all going out. They're going. I think we see the first one to die. 
Oh, dear me. I imagine you got on as well. I imagine Ulrika and her were sort of, you know, buddies. So there we go. That's all very sad. That's very, very sad. Okay, there we go. So how are the Taralsons doing now? So what's going on with them? So their family. So, um, yes, they've lost the leader. The husband of the leader is still alive. They've got loads, got loads of kids going on, but only one grandchild. They've only got one grandkid going on. Crikey, they need to get on with that a bit. We're doing better than that, and I've kind of overlooked that quite a bit. We do need to possibly... Oh, hang on. Nice can go and do some stuff. Uh, we do need to possibly bring these back and get them doing some more stork letter writing stuff. That might be a good idea. Um, but for now, hang on a second. We can now hire a worker. We can hire Nice Biscuits. Hello, Nice Biscuits. Um, and let's get you going out to play because that's an important part of childhood. So there we go. Wonderful. And um, yes, can we, can we, we'll exit the, oh, I think I've just made you, no, hang on, carry on doing what you were doing. I've interrupted, resume working. Sorry, yeah, go and do some playing. Um, we want to go outside. There we go. Um, I think, here, is it worth summoning back all of those people and bringing them home and then just getting them to write some letters to the stock? I think it might be. So how about you two? Um, oh, hang on a minute. You're promoting a business. Okay, and what are you doing? You're just yelling about how great we are. That's fine. So when you finish promoting this business, if you could then, Custard Cream, where are you going? Which business are you promoting? I haven't got any over there. Um, there we go. Right, so slow time down. Could you send, uh, send you home and you go home? So you two go and do that, please. And yeah, we'll wait until you arrive home. Hang on. Okay, Custard Cream is taking a while to get over here, but okay, it's fine. Apparently, what's that? Two dynasties are now allies. Okay, the Taralsons and the Martins are now allied. And I thought there was a level up there, but I've missed it. Okay, hang on a minute. Hang on. Can we see who's leveled up? Can we see this? So if we just pop over like that, it's no one there. Uh, it's no one at Hey Nonny Nonny. It's no one at the airport. It's no one at Big and Bubbly. Okay, is it so healthy? Yes, it is. It's someone that's so healthy. Um, Lawrence, possibly Lawrence. Um, you can have a point of dexterity because that seems like a good thing to have. Uh, just a quick check, Visby PD. Yeah, they've all leveled up. Right, is um, is um, is she home yet? Is Custard Cream home? No, I think she might be just coming around the corner. There she is. Hello, Custard Cream. Right, you get home, please. So when you arrive in here, we'll click on you. Right, and then. Can you do this whole sort of stalk letter writing thing? There you go. Frederick's there. He can help you do the writing. He'll hold the pen or whatever. And yeah, make sure the ink's ready. There you go. So you two get on with doing all that kind of stuff. We'll just go over here and go, oh, look, there's a there's an arsenal over there. That's very nice. Ah, we'll do some level ups, actually. There we go. Oh, one of our police people has leveled up. Oh, that's very good. Um, okay, point of dexterity, I think. That's got to be good. So I expect the rest of them will start leveling up as well, which is very nice. Ulrika, you just keep on doing the musicy stuff. That's very good. Right, we'll keep an eye on that. How is the um how's the tavern doing? Oh look, there's loads of people out there. There's all sorts of people out here. Just having a fun old time. There's Sven the innkeeper, Thomas the innkeeper, and then we've got um Ingrid the innkeeper, which is wonderful. Somebody just ran in there. Who on earth was that just sprinting in at 100 miles an hour? That was very quick. But yeah, we've got loads of people tending to customers. So we're not actually making any goods, but we are tending to customers. Possibly, do we need to notch that down to possibly three to make one of you go and you know, make some produce? Because that'd be quite good, wouldn't it? Can we get another person? No, we can't because of the level of the building botherations. Okay, never mind, never mind. Also, we don't have very much money. We have no money, it seems. Okay, <laughs> right. The tavern has been very, very expensive to set up. But hopefully, yes, it will, um, it'll pay off in the long run. Oh, look, and these people over here are getting married. Oh, that's nice. Congratulations, you two. That's very lovely. Good job. Um, and the Dynasty Taralsons have acquired a new title. That's, I didn't mean to zoom in on your face, but okay. Oh, you're all just sort of, just having a little family get together. Oh, that's lovely. There you go. Right, let's go back and look at this person. Right, so another of the police has leveled up. Yep, dexterity. Very good. Go back to Ulrika. Hang on a second. Uh, you keep on doing the stuff. Now, did your stalk letter writing work? Um, I don't think it did. I don't think it did. Because you are not. She's not print. The stalk hasn't, hasn't sort of, you know, popped by to pay a visit yet. Ah, botherations. Okay, never mind. Never mind. 
Um, somebody else has left up. Oh, it's Matilda over at Big and Bubbly. Um, have a point of, oh, I don't know, a point of dexterity, because that means you've got dexterity and intelligence of seven, and that's good. Um, right, let's go back to our house for a second. Back over to there. So if those two had no joy with that, how about then, press the right button, we bring you home and you home. So bring home Bourbon and Emily so they can come home and they can have a go at doing some stork letter writing as well. And we'll see how that goes. Um, in the meantime, one of the, oh, one of the innkeepers has leveled up. Oh, that was very fast. Well done. Um, okay, you can have a point of dexterity because you've got dexterity of one. You're about as dexterous as a you know, tankard. So there you go. You can have that increased a little bit. Oh, and look, are you doing the sort of production stuff? So we've got you two sort of, uh, yeah, you there and you there doing the innkeeping. And then you there and you there are doing production. You're, I don't know, you're cooking some meat or something. Oh, that's very good. Okay, yeah, what are you working on? Oh, no, you're making wheat beer. Okay, <laughs> you could have fooled me. There are an awful lot of ingredients in the, um, in the tavern. Maybe that's why we have no money. Because this often happens, doesn't it? When you start a new business, they have to stock up on all their kind of um, resources to make things. And yeah, it does cost a bit of money initially. Look at that. Yeah, we've just bought in a load of charcoal and spirit of wine and fat and such like. But yeah, in the long run, it will make us money. Just right now, it is, uh, it's is—it's hammering the finances just the tiniest bit. Oh, hang on. Good news about a long distance journey. This is going very well. Hang on. Alva. Um, point, uh, point of strength, probably. Strength of two can't be a bad thing. Um, and... What happened with our thing? Oh, no. <laughs> Did the long distance journey end just here? Um, hang on a minute. Um, she's leveled up. Okay, well done. You can have a point of uh, have a point of dexterity because that's good. Um, digestive isn't dead, I don't think, which is good. Hello, digestive. Well done. You brought back a massive pile of influence. How was wherever it was you went? There you go. You come back home and immediately get run over by a cart. Um, do you have anything exciting? That's the big question. You've got three chunks of amber. Oh, that could make us a nice pile of money. That could be quite good. Uh, a vacant office. Okay, slow time down a bit. What can we do with these chunks of amber? Because we don't need to keep them for anything. So hang on a second. You keep playing the music. That's fine. Um, are the others back home? So hang on a minute. Emily is home. Uh, is Bourbon home? Uh, digestive. Hang on, where's Bourbon? Yeah, right, they're home. Right, so you, can you do the thing with the whole stalk things? There's Emily, yeah, that's fine. And then Custard Cream, can you do that yet? Or is it not timed out enough? No, that's not quite timed out yet properly. Okay, never mind. Um, okay, so Digestive, yeah, what do we do with this? Where do we sell this, um, where do we sell this Amber? Hang on, you need to go in there, don't you? So you pop into there. So yeah, we've got three lots of Amber. So can we, uh, where would that be? Would it be a luxury item, I suppose, or a raw material, possibly? I don't know. What would that come under? I imagine it's a luxury item, but it doesn't seem to be any. They're manufactured items. It's not raw materials, because these aren't sort of fancy enough. Uh, I don't know where it would be. Is it under any of these at all, or is it just a thing that isn't here because they don't sell it? Yes, yeah, so if you search for amber, it's not there. So maybe it's not at Gdansk. Okay, Riga. Is it at Riga? I assume not. Can we look at the other markets? Um, no, we can't. Okay, never mind. All right, so can we just have a quick look at, say, where's, where's a market? Find me a market, somebody. There we go, that'll do. Um, how about here? So, I mean, how do we know what we can get for it if it's not showing in the things? I'm not quite sure how we can work that out. Um, I mean, did it say over it? Hang on, digestive. Um, yeah, you've been set to go, go to a building. That's fine. I thought you were already in that building, but okie doke. Uh, yeah, I mean, it does say, yeah, buying at Old Town for 500. But then, yeah, I don't know how we can see how much we can sell it for if it's not in the list. We can't compare it to anything. Uh, do you know what? That's probably fine. Pop over to pop over to Old Town for a bit anyway. You can yeah, knit back home, go and see people and such like. Go and you know, get back to, you know, get used to the whole Visby life again for a bit. And somebody else has leveled up. Oh my goodness me. It's Ingrid the innkeeper. Well done, Ingrid. You can have a point of dexterity to make you a little bit more productive. That is very good indeed. Right. How is the inn looking? 
Are we looking okay? Right, they've got all the ingredients they need to do, you know, their orders, to work through their order list. We've got three of them tending to customers and one of them making some alcohol. Do you know what we'll do then? Notch that down to two. So two people working uh, on sort of products and two people tending to the staff, uh, tending to the customers, sorry, the drinkers, the clientele possibly. Yeah, there we go. That seems to be a good mix. That seems to work quite well. Uh, oh, look at that. There's a massive queue. <laughs> There's a huge queue of people. There's loads of room. There's loads of space. Come in. Come in and sit down. It's not like you're, they're going to be pushed for space. Just, you know, what if you could sit here? There's an entire empty table here. Come on. In, in you come, Un. Un and Hjalmar, you can share a table, please. Have a nice chat. You might like each other. And there we go. Digestive has arrived at the market. Just have a little chat with Mum. Hi, Mum. How are you? Oh, you're still playing the music. Are you? Well done. Right, so if we then go into the market with Digestive. So here we go. So we can sell this. We just drag that in. That's going to make us, yeah, one and a half grand. 511. But I'm not sure how we can see how that's going to go. Because, I mean, is Amber in this list? I really don't know. I don't know how we find it. I don't know which one of these things it's in. Is it an intermediate, possibly? Is it an intermediate thing? But then when we search for it, it should have appeared. But it didn't. I thought it was like a luxury item. I thought we'd seen it before in previous runs. I thought it came up as a luxury thing. But uh, but no, clearly it does not. And it's not a raw material either. So who knows what it is? I think we'll just um, we'll just sell it. It's fine. There we go. Get us one and a half grand. Thank you so much. Beautiful. Right. There we go. Right. Can we send you back out on a mission now then? <laughs> Can we just send you back out on a trade mission? Because that would be handy. Oh, someone else has leveled up. One of the police people have a point of dexterity. Um, hang on a minute. Ulrika's not playing any music. Ah, crikey. Many things are happening. Custard Cream, can you do the thing yet? No, you can't. Not quite yet. How did it go for the other two? Um, where is... Ah, oh, there's so many people all in a big pile. Hang on a minute. Um, let's have a look. Where would she be? Emily, did it? Did things go well? Did things go well? I, no. Oh, dear. We had no luck with the whole children thing at all. Yeah, failed to produce offspring, Bourbon. Oh, okay. Oh, that's that's a bit of a shame. Okay, right. Back to letter writing school with you all. You need to be writing slightly better letters, please. Remember your punctuation and everything. Uh, okay, right. Digestive, can you go away on a long distance trade mission, please? How much is that? 2,450. We can afford that. Um, to Stockholm. Yeah, sounds great. Off you pop. There you go. Your wanderlers can kick back in and you can go to see a whole new part of the world. You enjoy. Oh, look at that. Erka Milson is just in our house, just having a chat with our four people here. But they're all kind of stood in the same space. So it does look a little bit, looks a little bit like Nightmare Fuel. Look at that. That is very odd. He's probably looking thinking, what is going on here? What kind of monsters are they keeping in their basement? But there we go. It's it's fine. They're all individual people. They're just standing very, very, very close together, Urk. But yeah, why are you here? What are you doing? Oh, you're doing some PR. You're doing some PR stuff with us. And now you're going to go and have a small cake of joy. Do you know what? Yeah, that sounds fine. What a perfect plan. Now, somebody in the comments on the previous video did make a very good point. So we are playing a game called The Guild 3, yet we still have had no interaction at all with any of the guilds in the game. So let's go and see if we're even remotely close to getting contacted by a guild. And apparently the guilds do come and contact us. So if we meet their requirements, their kind of entry requirements, they do come and have a chat with us. It's autumn 1436, which is very nice. So let's have a little look. So are we near to uh, being contacted by the Guild of Alchemists? We're very good in terms of diplomacy. And we're very, very good in terms of attitudes of the dynasty. Look at that. We match very nicely there. But alas, we are just too honest. We're just too nice. We have to be a little bit more dishonest and a bit more cunning to maybe become sort of, you know, aligned to this particular guild. Okay, the Guild of Craftsmen. Again, diplomatic good, generous good. We need to be a little bit more cunning again. Okay, merchants, not too bad. Not too bad. That's actually looking okay. Maybe we're just too nice. Freemasons, I mean, look at that. Hang on. They're all green. They're all green. That's green. Could we not go and become a Freemason? That'd be nice. Or the Guild of Thieves, we're nowhere near that because we don't do that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, look, that's green. That's green. They're very green. They're really next to each other. They're quite close. And they are both little green icon things. So I would have assumed that we would have been contacted by the Guild of Freemasons. I assume they would have come to us and said, hello, would you like to join us? Because you seem good. What does it give us? 
Secure a building. I don't quite know what that does. It stops the building from falling apart quite so readily. And it gives it a bit of security and a bit of fire protection, which would be quite nice. I'd go for that. I'd go for that. I'd secure things up a little bit if we could. But yeah, they've not kind of approached us. But yeah, somebody in the comments did say that they just come to you and they say, hey, would you like to join our guild? And we go, yes, please. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to do with this. I'm not entirely sure how we, how long we have to wait. Do we have to sort of remain with these things sort of in place for a certain amount of time before they approach us? I do not know. I'm not entirely sure. What do the other things give you then? Let's have a look. So I never really looked through this. So uh, if you get aligned with the Guild of Alchemists, you can make Potion of the Fate Women. You can gather a Mandrake. You get plus 25 health and plus 3 resistance. That makes sense because, you know, you're, I don't know, in taking potions or whatever. Um, Guild of Craftsmen can motivate your workers and gives you plus 10% productivity. That's very good. That's very good. Um, Guild of Merchants, a profitable trade mission and a permanent plus three bonus when bargaining. Freemasons just sort of shores up your building. And Guild of Thieves makes you stealthy, makes you more entertaining, but you can distract the residents as well. Okay, so they're all quite good. They're all pretty good. That one's exciting. Profitable trade mission, but yeah, a little bit of a way off with them. Um, okay, but yeah, still nothing from them. Nothing from them at all. So I don't quite know how long we have to wait or if we'll just be waiting forever. I've got no idea. So a quick check on the tavern. Has the tavern actually made any money? Let's go and have a quick look at the budget book. So last year, because of course we've just gone to a different day. So last year, I mean, it was built last year as well. So we have to kind of take that into account. So go to there, go to businesses, right? The bottle and biscuit. Oh, yeah, we spent quite a lot of money on the bottle and biscuit. We spent an awful lot of money on getting it sort of yeah, built and then having the add-ons and getting the employees and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it didn't make any money at all. It made a crushing loss of about 20,000 of our monies. But now I think it's all set up. Now we've got all the ingredients in because these things are expensive. Buying 13 barrels and 30 lots of beef and 30 lots of herbs all does sort of mount up in cost. So now they're all in. I'd like to think they can be manufactured into some nice goods and then they can make us a good pile of profit. So yeah, the sort of yeah, the initial expense is quite high, but now they can get that sorted. So okay, it didn't make as much money as we'd hoped, but hopefully yeah, it can actually get some money underway in the future, which is very good. So I think with our tavern now all set up, with the bottle and biscuit now trading, I think we will finish things up for now and we'll come back next time and just see how we can get on. I think our next goal has to be to get up to noblemen get 20,000 monies. We've got the thousand influence and loads more as well. So the influence isn't a problem. It's the uh, it's the money. So get 20,000 monies. We're halfway there just over. So get that in, become noblemen, and then we'll see what we can do with that. Yeah, then we get the nepotism thing. So then we could possibly think about getting some more biscuit people into the council, which would be very good indeed. Also, just notice there, apparently when you become a nobleman, you can take a bath in the bathroom. I don't quite know why we can't do that beforehand, but there we go. Okay, but yeah, that's the plan for next time, I think. So yeah, we'll try our best to get that money and get up the social ladder a little tiny bit more. But yeah, we'll do all that kind of stuff next time out. Hopefully you are still enjoying this. If you are, please do leave a like. That would be very, very marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with how we get on here next time out in the Guild 3. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I will see you next time. Everyone loves barbecued rat. My compliments to the chef. I don't think he did much. He literally stuck a stick up the rat's bottom and put it on a fire. Shrieking weird ladies in the water. Probably not a good thing. The heroes offer a decisive solution to all the woman's riddles <laughs> by shoving her off the bridge. Yay. Yay for the chiseled stick. 